Hello, my name is Doug Lyon. I'm a media lecturer at Brighton University. I teach video production and I use Facebook both for social reasons and for professional work as well. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so what are your thoughts on companies screening potential employees before actually recruiting them? Well, the thing is about companies screening people with Facebook is it's probably not very fair because just because somebody goes out and has a nice time and takes 100 photos of themselves and puts photos of them and their mates going like that a million times and then everybody says you're hot under it, it probably is not a very good indicator of how good a person they are at work. Um, but it is an indicator of something and I'm not so sure that CVs and interviews were a very good system either. So if it was me, I'd probably like a combination of all of them. But I've got to say that I have looked at people's profiles, even just to choose student ambassadors and think, nah, just from looking at their profile picture. So I think it's one of those, like it or not, it's here. So if you pretend it doesn't exist, you're the one that's going to miss out, really. Perfect. Um, so do you think that the old school style of recruitment is slowly disappearing? I don't think you can replace, uh, I don't think we'd want to replace CVs because they are really handy to look at, um, you know, if you've got 100 people applying for a job that you can take five for an interview and then one person's going to get it, CVs are really handy, but I don't think they're very fair either because if you've ever sat with 100 CVs on the table, Within a matter of seconds, you start going, no, no, maybe, no. It's amazing how anybody can do that. And that might be something as simple as, I hate Times New Roman font, so that would be no's for a start. Now, is that fair? Is that a, a kind of any indicator of whether that person would be good at that job or not? Not really, or not at all, actually. So I think that the... The long answer about what's fair is that to filter people effectively involves spending time with them and really kind of getting to know them and kind of probably testing them out in a few different situations. But nobody's got the time to do that with 100, 200, sometimes 1,000 applicants for a job. So I don't know. I don't, I don't really feel like looking at somebody's Facebook profile is any less of a realistic way than kind of looking at a CV and deciding you don't like somebody because it's in the wrong font. Okay, perfect. Um, so, do you think that it's um, a possible invasion of one's privacy or do you think employees should know their true self? Well, it's not an invasion of your privacy, is it? An invasion of your privacy would be somebody looking through your bin and smelling your undies or finding your bank statements, that would be an invasion of your privacy. When you've put something up on a public site and voluntarily put pictures all over it and written stupid things on your wall and all that, I mean, that's not your privacy. There's nothing private about it. Um, I mean, I think that's just, isn't that the mistake that people are making? They were kind of complaining about something as if somebody's looking through their bin or kind of peeping through their window. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's your choice. That is your choice, isn't it? I honestly think that most people these days don't know the difference between public and private themselves. And the amount of conversations I see on people's... Well, I have my wall turned off on both of my Facebook accounts. Off. I don't want anything on my wall. Why, why do I want something on a wall? Why, why do I want something public at all? I, I don't. So send me a message, comment on a status or a picture, and I have my settings mostly set that I have to decide whether I post that myself, even tags, it's not that hard to do it. No. Um, put yourself in a recruiter's shoes, do you think you'd be tempted by screening candidates as an end site? If so, why? And what are the benefits of doing so? Well that's the same question as before really, isn't it? Uh, if I put myself in that sho in those shoes, which I did last week because we were looking for student ambassadors, I did do that. There was a couple of them that I just thought, I just can't be bothered. Lads with their arms around each other out in the pub going, ah, girls out, and, 
it's just stupid. Why behave in a stupid way if you want to be treated intelligently? There's an old school perspective for you. <laughs> Um, what certain behaviours shouldn't be portrayed through Facebook? Well, I, I think if it's a social thing and you're doing whatever you want to do and there's no consequences, I mean, who cares? But if you know that, like the statistic that you've come up with, that 70% of people who are turned down is because of that, is that right? Yeah. Well, then, then it's one of those like it or lump it situations, isn't it? That's just the way that it is. That's like saying... Well, I want to go to a job interview in my jeans, because why should I have to wear a suit? And then complaining you don't get the job. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. It's been invented. You can't uninvent it. So you've either got to play the game or you've got to recognise that you're cutting your options down. So, you know, have... Or have a Facebook that's with your university email and just have a really clean one with not much on it and some nice photos and edited them properly in some galleries and maybe a bit of your own video work or something and then have your normal one separate. I mean, that's what I do, I have two separate accounts. Um, do you think it's unfair that they are being judged for small issues such as emotions, like smiley faces? Um, sorry. Do you think it's unfair that they are being judged for small issues such as emoticons, such as uh, which is smiley faces? According to Mashable, 14% of surveyed employees disregard candidates for that single lapse in judgment alone. Do you think this is ridiculous? Oh, well, that's tricky, isn't it? I mean, look, if you if you're mm -hmm. running an organisation and you want people to work for you, who can whatever, write articles, do press releases, you know, if that's part of the job, to communicate with other people in an effective way, then you want literate people. I mean, that's not that much to ask. So if what you put out into the world is illiteracy, which isn't to do with whether you can spell or not, it's to do with being stuck in, like, text speak, then, of course, an employer is going to look at that and go, well, I'm not going to have them writing my next press release. So, it's the don't judge a book by the cover thing, isn't it? But if the cover is that you look like somebody who's a silly teenager, then that's not a very grown-up impression. And if you send an emoticon at the end of a message to somebody, whether it's your mum or anybody then that's kind of different but if it's out in the public and it looks like that's what you do and that's your mode of address then that isn't appropriate for the workplace maybe it's wrong to assume that you might think that that might be appropriate in the workplace from your Facebook thing but then why take a chance I was just gonna ask you like what are your personal <coughs> opinions on social networking sites do you think they what are the benefits of having them and do you think it misses out on people communicating with one another? I know it's leaning off a little bit towards employment issues, but it would be good to know. Okay, a couple of years back, Google tried to bring something in called Google Wave. Did you come across that? Yeah. And Google Wave, really what they tried to do was to lift what Facebook... Facebook is basically a platform, isn't it? Mm. It's not really a website or... It's a platform and it's a really handy platform to throw links about and share things and that's what it's really good at. Whereas if you go over to LinkedIn, which is the professional networking site, you can see straight away that they just get rid of all the shit. You know, it's really simple, it's really focused and it's a bit of a relief actually when you go into LinkedIn. That it's not just full of rubbish everywhere. So I think Facebook's a really good platform but it's a bit confused about what it's become. Google Wave, what Google Wave was going to be was that you could sign into your Google Wave account and you could plug everything else into it. So you could plug your Facebook, your MySpace in those days, whatever, LinkedIn, all of it into one interface and have it all on the go with one password. I think, you know, we're all a bit tired of having to remember 15 different passwords and then you end up using the same one for everything and then you think, well, that's not really secure. That's kind of destroyed the point of having a password. So that's kind of a sign of our times. And... 
something gets invented and then it doesn't necessarily get used for what it was invented for. So like uh, Friends Reunited had its day for a few years and then everybody got sick of it and that disappeared. I don't think Facebook necessarily will... I mean, we're talking about Facebook specifically. I mean, there are other things I don't really know about Twitter, so I can't really say about that. I think Twitter's used more professionally than Facebook is. People seem to like that because it's short and clean and doesn't have so much clutter on it. But I think, like, Facebook tried to bring in that branch out, which was their equivalent of LinkedIn, the professional plug-in. But I, I don't want a professional plug-in into my social account. It doesn't make any sense to me. I want, I want them separate. I think a lot of people have that thing of, like, I want something partitioned off that feels like that's mine and I can do what I like with my mates and something else. So I don't really know if that answers your question, but I think that's probably the way things will go probably in the next couple of years is that Facebook will start to realise if it doesn't change to meet that market demand people will start to go away and then that's when they change so at the moment they just fiddle with things for no particular point as far as I can tell just for the sake of looking like they've changed it but um, I mean it's it's mostly harmless fun but it isn't harmless if it's going to affect your career profile is it then it's harmful fun. And if, if it is the case that, I mean, that's an amazing statistic that 70% of people are turned down based on their Facebook profile, then either people's behaviour will change, in which case if everybody kind of went, all oh, right, we need to not do this, and they changed their behaviour, then employees would have to not do that anymore. That's one option. Or employers think, actually, we've realised we've lost a lot of people screening them ineffectively, so we need to not do that anymore. Or something else happens, somebody invents something else that's like a mixture of LinkedIn and Facebook that everybody goes, oh yeah, we'll do that then. Yeah. I mean, Facebook keep, Facebook's clever because it keeps you because the mistake people make these days is you think you upload your 100 photos of you going out for a nice time with your mates and, and you think that's stored somewhere and that it's there forever. Well, it sort of is, but that's not really the same thing as having it in a photo album in, like in the olden days or even putting it on a DVD. So I suspect there's going to come a point where a lot of people lose their history mm. and that could be damaging and kind of weird in a different way but that's probably another story. Um, yeah, I was also going to say, on your Facebook, um, it's kind of a bit going off, that's fine, the thing, but um, I don't know how I was talking to you, but we were thinking, recently, um, you see how, like, all your comments from, like, the last, like, from 2009, they all came up in one section on your wall, on your timeline, and everyone thought it was their inbox has been posted on your timeline, and everyone's going, quick, you need to get home and hide it from your timeline. But it was, it was, it's this little thing where if you scroll down, you can see like, it's like a collective of your whole three years in one. You just see everyone's comments. Or, and I think- From it's, your wall. Yeah, yeah. From, and it's, it's, I think it's amazing how, you just actually think how much data Facebook has of yours. Mm -hmm. Like, how does it have all of that history? And we have so much personal information. So much personal information. <coughs> There's so much stuff that I thought it was from like private chats, but I think. But they save their private chats now. Like now you can look back on yeah. your private chats from like the first time you ever spoke to them, and you just they sort of think, what are they doing with that data? Yeah, like. It's like yeah, but there's a couple of other things going on there. One is like if you've got a wall, it was already public, and all that's happening is. Just put it, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's just made easier. I don't have a wall, so I'll turn your wall off. It's an easy solution to that one. Yeah, well, I don't mind, but like, it is because then, em then employers can have a look and have a look how you, the way you talk, the way you used to talk, the way have you changed. But is that not available to just change your settings? No, no, you can on. turn it off. Right. But I'm just saying, like, if they do have access to that wall, your wall, and you've not turned it off, and Facebook could just put it up. Because that's what they did. They it wasn't there before. Then one day they put it up, and I was like, 
all my friends are like ranting and raving about all their comments are on walls and everyone can see like if you just scroll down because they're easy it's just that tiny thing did you see it no I didn't. but it's like it's only small on your timeline it's just not if you're going page after page after page it's just a little thing and there's loads and you just keep scrolling down the whole page doesn't move it's just that well, look, it's interesting, isn't it? Because what the thing is, the average person, what are they going to be afraid of having outed? It's probably going to be flirty stuff with somebody that they shouldn't be flirting with when they're in a relationship, or what else is it going to be that you're going to be bothered yeah. about, or, or slacking somebody off that yeah. they think, you know, shit, you know, it's going to be one of those two things, isn't it? Well, maybe it's not such a bad thing that people think a little bit more about what, they say, what they're yeah. throwing out there, really, you know, because... It's really new, all this stuff. I mean, you lot don't know because you don't remember the time before it, but even mobile phones are still quite new. We don't really know what we're doing with this technology and we don't really know what the consequences are. But the other side of it is, you know, like you can sort of set whatever they call like mining nanobots into people's stuff and pick up key words and maybe that means that you get a different advert down the side. But nobody's going to be sat there physically reading 14 billion people's stream of shite are they because it's not interesting okay. so i don't know i think you've got to keep it in perspective it's like cctv cameras we all we know that we've got more in this country than anywhere else in the world but we also know that nobody's watching them and all that happens is a crime's committed there's a possibility that there's some video footage of it after the event yeah. it's never stopped anything before the event and then so it's kind of a bit crazy really We've just got a bit lost in it all, recording everything. We think recording everything is what makes us immortal. I think we've got a sort of fear of death and we think that if we record everything, then we've left something behind. But it's silly because we've just left behind a sea of shite yeah, okay. and nobody can be bothered to look at it. So what's the problem? So true. <laughs> so true. Um, do you think there's anything that we need to pick up on more? Like to help narrow it down? I know it's tough to say because it's early days and we'll probably need more interviews and we could actually film you again. Yeah, I think you've got a good focus. I think your focus is about recruitment and how social networking sites are being used by re recruiters. And that's quite a, a zeitgeisty hot topic. And I think that's fine for your focus, but I think you will pick up things along the way that might be... I mean... You know, hang out in W. H. Smith's and look at the magazine covers because it might be something like some really nerdy computer magazine that you would never normally look at has got something on the front saying the new Facebook, and it might be somebody's just in the back room somewhere working on something that ah right that's that is a good idea. You know, that's where it'll come from. Yeah. So we haven't really have we had anything new in the last few years? I, think, um, I guess Twitter's still relatively say, new, isn't it, in comparison? Yeah, I think so. Twitter has, um, it originally, like, from my perspective, I, from what I thought it was, is more to do with employees and people use it for work, um, and, like, not, not so much just work, but, like, it, like I said, it cuts all the crap, and then I started using it, and I think more and more people are using it just to use it because it's the new thing and people don't actually, people just are getting a bit too, oh I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to tweet this. Like, yeah. I'm drinking a cup yeah, of tea. Yeah, they'll take a picture and be like, mm, I'm taking a picture. And Instagram. Right? And Instagram. And upload it. <laughs> See that annoys me, Instagram. It's like, what, I mean that is insane for me that we've created a thing that makes Digital photographs look like a shit retro analog photograph. Mm. The same effects on everything. Again, it's just like it's just indiscriminate. It's really generic, and and it, I just find it really boring. It's like what what happened? Everybody's got a camera now these days, but then you look at everything and it all looks the same. Yeah. So we've we've lost our sense of a craft. You know, people used to understand that it would take you several years of doing photography to become a photographer. Now everybody thinks they're a photographer, and, and they're not. Um, what I was going to say also is because a lot of people that I've spoken to um, regarding Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, because I've only recently got an iPhone, and 
everyone who I speak to, they don't check Facebook because, especially on their phone, because it's, you just look for your news feed and the majority of it is just junk. Like, people have liked something and it's comes up on your wall and it's just loads of junk I don't care about. But that just means you haven't fiddled with your settings. Yeah, no, that's true. I uns I've uns so that's like, this shows how lazy, like, people are, like, talking for myself, like, I don't, so I'd rather check Twitter because they're short, snappy, keeps me up to date, and, like, as well as Instagram, Instagram is just a photo thing, but I, I didn't know, I thought, in, before I had an iPhone, I thought Instagram was just, like you said, to up, upload a picture of an effect, but it's not, it's more than that, like, it, it has its own tight like, news feed, and it has its own comments, and who's like that, and I didn't know that. But all like, who I talk to now just says, oh, I just check Twitter and Instagram, not about Facebook. Like, mm. And I think Facebook now is just more and more people holding on to it for the photo and the history, like you said, that they don't want everything to go. And I think that's, like, but a lot of people are using Instagram as a plug-in into Facebook, aren't they? They're still posting it up on Facebook yeah. as well. And that's Facebook. It. Facebook's strength is that it's a platform that's really easy to plug other yeah. things into. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that'll go away now. No. But I think the nature of how people use it might. And I think the thing is, I mean, I've got on my work Facebook, I've got like, whatever, 250 either students or staff. On my social one, I've got like a 1,000 people. And a lot of them I've just turned off over yeah. the years. They've just, they've just turned off. They sit there, not doing... Just the amount of friends that I have on Facebook who I have no idea who they are. I'm, every time like, I go through, I just unfriend, 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 because there's just, it's just no point having them as a friend on Facebook. Don't talk to them. Don't know who they are. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes, Lovie. Um, what do you think the future will be for social networking sites and employment, recruitment? I, mean? I don't really know. I think, I think, you know... Sorry, like you said, you were going to join... Do you think it will take over, or... You said a uh, heavy medium between LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah, but then there's... I think the thing to remember is that everybody's lazy mm -hmm. and everybody's scared. That's my experience of people in the world. So if people think that they can do something easier with something, if it's easier to get everybody to send you a PDF of their CV and you have them in a folder on your desktop, then you don't have to deal with boxes of paper to deal with, then that becomes a thing that happens. If it becomes easy, if anything comes up as a way of screening people that is genuinely effective and easier, that's what will happen. If it was up to me, I would rather have... I mean, I think sort of blogging or vlogging or various forms of that kind of thing are a bit more effective and a bit more interesting and useful. And I think that hasn't really had its day yet. It's become a bit of a sort of strange niche thing, blogging. But actually, I think, it, I think to go and look at somebody's blog, if they've put lots of interesting stuff up there and thought about it properly, that's a great way to decide whether somebody's worthy of bring it in for a chat or not. So I think all the technology is already there, we just haven't quite worked out what to do with it yet. And then there's stuff like Grindr and um, technology that's beginning to use kind of Bluetooth and GPRS and other stuff that, you know, if you started add a surveillance aspect to that, then that could get a bit fucked up and spooky. You know, if you start having employers who can see a trail of where you've actually been, on the planet and what you've actually done as a way of judging you, then we're into proper big brother land. And if people can do stuff, they do, don't they? And the technology's there, it's already been invented. We already know that the police, if they've got, you know, the police, if they're on a murder case, they can get somebody's phone and say where they've been in the last few months. The, the, the trail is there. So I don't know. Mm. Uh, and the other thing is that we, we treat the internet as an infinite resource. We treat it like we used to throw rubbish into the sea, that we used to think, oh, it's gone away if you throw it into the sea, or well, that mercury. Well, no, it's not. It's in our livers now because it didn't go away, did it? But I think the internet is a similar thing. We think that you can just endlessly throw everything up there and there's no limit to it. Well, I, I'm not sure that's the case, really. 
and you know when you start to get things like anonymous and the hacktivists playing around with things and you realise that actually it is possible for somebody just to pull the plug you know like what happened in Egypt with the Arab Spring and you know the Egyptian government literally turned the internet off and anonymous were wherever they were turning it back on again and getting people to send messages to them and reposting them by proxy and so that's it, they're after you now. <laughs> so I don't know, I mean, I don't know. If you, want to, if you want to get into predicting the future of technology, get Wired magazine, that's the one. Wired magazine that's really good for articles about technology and culture and society. That's enough shite for one day, surely. Mm.